Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the food experience. Today's food experience, the kind folks over at Nuke sent me their pizza oven tables, prep cart, grill cart, all kinds of multi-purpose things can be done with this item. And it also has locking casters, a slide out drawer. The dimensions are 24 by 30. And I'm gonna put it to the test and show you some different ways that I've used it. And without further ado, here we go. Using the Nuke table to prep some veggies and also for my cooking appliance. Chopping some celery, scooping it up and putting it into a bowl. Slicing some carrots, slicing up a red onion, and then cutting it four ways and putting it through the Sherwin vegetable chopper to dice it. Placing the bowl of carrots and celery along with the onions into the drawer. Using the Carinier cooktop with Dutch oven and pot. Making a sofrito with the carrots, onions, and celery. Added the ground beef and all the tomato products. Got the pasta going. Put the pasta into the sauce and stir it gently. And then it is ready to serve. And oh my, this was a delicious dish. Check it out, folks. Now, I'll be using it in conjunction with my pellet smoker. It's really cool because it's got the handles and the locking wheels. But in this drawer, I have some towels. I have the diffuser plate scraper nitrile gloves, Dermapro Instant Read Dermometer, Dermapro Twin Temp Spike Plus, a brush, a sponge, some high temperature gloves. I mean, that's really cool. And going down below, I put some of my rubs out. You could see still plenty of room you could really load this thing up went to wild pork got a couple aged prime beef ribeye fillets these are going to be delicious 1.79 pounds these look really good nice marbling they are so super thick i'm seasoning them with shake that by the flat top king butter and garlic goodness oh yeah i don't think i'm going to need a binder or anything like that i could put some oil down but Honestly, I don't think it's necessary. Lots of salt crystals there, I see. And these are super thick steaks, so you really want to season them up quite well. Turn them over. I'll insert the black one over here. Right in the middle and across. Turning on the pit boss, setting the temperature to 180 degrees. I'll wait for Miss Lexi to get through the startup process. The one with the white probe, I'll put back here. And the one with the black probe, right ahead of it, a couple inches apart. Close the lid. They don't look that great yet, but I could tell there's a nice mahogany color going through them from where the smoke penetrated. Covering both of them up, setting the pit boss at 400 degrees. For this, I will want to use one high heat barbecue glove. There you go, 400 degrees flaming, live action. This is my dad's and he wants it more towards medium.
Oh yeah, that's a nice sear on there. Let's turn mine over. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks good. That looks real good. Let's see where I'm at. Got a 116. It's kind of hard to show you guys. Uh, a little hotter here. 120. About 150, yeah. Alright, we're good. I'm going to tent that. 138, 140. Yeah, I think this one's pretty done. But yeah, I got some good grill marks on there. Definitely got a nice crust on it. Not sure if the camera is doing it justice, but onto a plate it goes and it will be tented. Turn off the pit boss and let it complete the shutdown. Here's my dad's steak. That's wild. Look at all that juice, would you? Wow. That looks so dang tasty. I tell you what. And my dad likes for me to slice it because uh, he has a difficulty with it. Start over here. Sure is tender. Like I said, he likes a medium. Right here, it's a little bit above, I could tell, but he'll like it. Oh, that has such a nice taste. I could tell that it was cooked over wood has a nice smoky taste to it. Pretty sure he is gonna thoroughly enjoy this. It is so tender and juicy. It's been resting probably for a good 20 minutes. He's definitely gonna enjoy that. Time for mine. Wow, so super juicy. I'm not gonna cut mine into strips like that, but let's take a look at the middle. That's what I'm looking at. Look at all that juice. It's definitely towards the medium side, but I'm not unhappy either. Pizza time. I have the Nuke table with my 16 inch pizza oven. I have a pizza rocker for cutting the pizza, a tray for letting the pizza rest on. In the drawer, I have a pizza screen. I have a high heat glove. I have a pizza paddle hanging from one of the pegs and I have all of my ingredients ready to go. First, I want to flour the work surface a little bit. Turn out the dough. A little more flour on top. And start pushing it out. like to try to define the edge first. And then work up and down. Give it a flip over. And this surface is not good like a marble counter would be. The pizza dough does tend to stick to it, so I gotta be very cautious with what I do. I am gonna need the pizza paddle. Little flour on the paddle. Spread it out. Knock off the extra. And have that on the standby. Try to get that on the pizza peel. There we go. Stretch it out a little bit. Make sure it doesn't stick. We're good. And proceed with the sauce. Parmigiano Reggiano. I like a lot of that. Just cover that up. And I put that on the bottom because it'll burn easy if you put it up top. Mozzarella.
and I'm putting a light them out because I want to put some Canadian bacon on there but I noticed when I try to put pizza in from the paddle to the pizza oven they could shift around so I'm hoping that the cheese on top of these will help keep it in place. Kind of push everything down and top it with some oregano. And here goes nothing. I can tell one spot is not perfect, but that's okay. Doesn't really need to be perfect. All right, turn it off. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty decent. I know it looks like really charred, but it doesn't really taste like that from my experience. Cheese is nicely browned. And I'll put it right on this cooling rack. What this does, it prevents the bottom of the pizza from getting soggy. Should be good to take it off now. Clear a spot here. I don't want any raw flour on the bottom. Not bad at all. Just this one spot. <laughs> Let's cut into it. This will be like a four piece deal. Yeah, the crust has a little bit of crispness, but it's super soft. And what I could do now is grab my pizza screen, put the slices on, and that's gonna be some good eating. To show you the edge, if it comes through on the camera at all, it's got some nice holes through it, so it definitely got some of the air. Here's the bottom. Could have got a little bit more well done, but I'm not angry either. All right, time to eat. Mmm. That's good. That's really good. Crust is nice and soft, but has a little bit of like crispness on the edge, but pillowy soft. So all in all, the Nuke pizza table, which is why I'm here doing this, is very versatile. You could use it indoors to hold like your microwave oven or a cooktop as I demonstrated, outdoors as a barbecue prep table. I could see also using it next to like a griddle if you don't have side shelves, it would be great. Definitely good as a pizza oven table, even for this big bad boy pizza oven that I got. It's really intended for 12 inch ovens and your oven would turn the other way. So the table would be in a different orientation, but that's okay, it works. And I'm happy to find a table that fits this oven. I like the pegs that it has on the side. You could hold different tools. The slide out drawer, I showed you some examples of what you could put in there. And the bottom shelf, I mean, so much space. You could store all kinds of different things. And also, I don't know if I really showed you, the wheels, two of them lock. So they have these little rockers on the wheel that lock them into place. Very nice indeed. I definitely recommend this new pizza oven table. It was fairly easy to assemble. The instructions are really good, I'll say that. What I'll do is put a link in my description down below where you can purchase it off of Amazon. I'll also put a link back to the manufacturer's website and I give it a double thumbs up food experience approved. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, drop me a line below. I love hearing from you. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I got all kinds of good things coming up. So until next time, have a stellar day. Be excellent. And most of all, remember me. I'm KJ Andy O, your food experience host for the most. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time.